There we go. And I think all the event pages are live. I hope all of, nope, there is this one. Takes longer to set these shows up than you would believe. Here we go. Greetings, unsettled souls, and a welcome to the correct views. Sam I. B. DeGange giving you political commentary for the media speaks. Happy to be here with you. Very, very happy to be here with you. And uh, what is that I hear? Sounds to me like uh, it's the entire theme song, the beginning of the theme song. Well, the only time we do that is when we need a talk bed. Why would we need a talk bed unless there was a new contest? And there is. Um, I've had some people helping out with uh, the costs of the show. Of course, you can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. The correct views at hotmail.com. That's important to you because we're doing something different here. For the dunce cap of the year, which is a combination of all the dunce cap shows, what I'm going to do is mail out invitations to anyone that donates to the show. Anyone at all that donates to the show. And you will get to pick the dumbest story of the year. I will also promote your favorite charity, your favorite business, your band, your school, whatever, your church, whatever it is uh, you want promoted. Will be done so all the way until the 1st of June. What do you have to donate? That's up to you. Whatever you want to donate between now and the 1st of December at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal, you will be uh, you will be included and uh, you'll get everything I outlined there. So we're going to get into the actual Fukushima news. And uh, I want to start with this Jim Acosta mess. Um, those of you on YouTube, I can go to screen share. Those of you on Facebook and HDEF, I won't be able to do so. By the way, I'm in my living room because my studio is being recarpeted. It's in another room where I live. Um, welcome to my living room. Um, I can go to screen share for those of you on YouTube. I will describe what I'm giving to you next, and it matters. How many of you remember that when the Fukushima disaster struck, there were a great number of people who had said that the footage was doctored? And it was looked up, and it was found out that... It was. The, the, some of the media tried to downplay the force of which the disaster, the explosion at the reactor happened. And it's important to be able to spot when that is done. And I was reminded of it again right before I went live by this mess that's happening with the Jim Acosta story. For those of you that don't know, Jim Acosta is a CNN reporter who has often stretched the truth uh, when reporting about Donald Trump. Uh, for instance, he's one of the people that have said that when Donald Trump says those people, that he means Latinos. And what he's referring to is the criminal element who has infiltrated the caravan. He is not referring to all dark-skinned people, Latinos, people from South America, etc. Okay, he's one of those people. He puts spin on things and make it, makes it sound as though Trump is saying something that he didn't. This man did not want to give the microphone up so that another colleague, another reporter, could ask a question. And he didn't, he didn't assault the woman. Those of you out there on the right saying that he assaulted the woman, he did not assault the woman. But he did block her attempt to get the mic from him. Now, I don't personally think that's all that much of a big deal, but when you remember with Lindowski, how he was treated when uh, he had a similar altercation with someone in the Trump campaign, the left made it sound like it was a huge deal. So it brings us to this idea of doctoring videos, which as technology gets better and better, we're going to see more and more of. And as I'm getting into this, people are going to say, well, what do you know, Sam? Are you some kind of an expert? For once, I can say, yeah. I have a degree in IMT, in video audio production. I did a very large majority of the passing time music that you hear, either in part or in total, particularly the older stuff, using Vegas Pro. It's a 
software. I know how to spot things in it, and I know how to use it impeccably. I have a degree, like I said, in this from Stark State, and I have been doing it with music and video most of my life. Now, the video that I'm about to share with you, YouTube, or, uh, you on YouTube, um, this, look what it shows here. It does not show in any way that Jim Acosta, uh, that, excuse me, Paul Joseph Watson edited this video. I'm going to, I can do this and show you guys. I can do this. All right. For those. Look. No, it's virtually identical. Is it 100% identical? No. Video compression is going to result in it looking marginally different. But does it show Acosta putting his hands on a woman to restrain her as she tries to grab the microphone? Yes. Inventing a giant conspiracy theory isn't going to change that fact. As you can see from the original editing track in Sony Vegas Pro, none of the individual tracks are sped up. A track that is sped up would show wavy lines in the original track field. Okay, do you understand what that means? Let me go ahead and put that into everyday language. When you edit video, or you put any kind of effects on video or anything like that, you inevitably leave a footprint behind. Now, this isn't a footprint that you will be able to immediately pick up or really pick up at all with the naked eye. That's why, hello, Mark, Matt, and Michelle. Michelle, what's up? Um, that's why a lot of you who have, if you ever, you've been talking about the singularity, where they, uh, you have amazing vision to be able to see a hundred times better than anyone else. Movies would be horrible for you. Horrible. It'd be unwatchable. You'd be able to catch every little nuance. Of those who would like to be able to hear half a mile away, you, music will be destroyed for you because they do things in, in compression. That's what it's called. A good way to describe compression, whether it's video or audio, is to imagine uh, it's easier to describe with audio, but it works with video too. If, if music isn't compressed, for better or for worse, sometimes it ruins music, but that's another debate. Um, it sounds like the drums are over here and the keyboards are over here and the bass is somewhere. Compression sort of brings it all together. However, that is different. That, that when, Whenever you change from an, like an MP4 to a movie file, or there's countless extensions, things change as you move from format to format. But that is radically different than changing. So what's my bigger point here? That the video wasn't doctored? Yes, but we're not talking about the Jim Acosta story, Sam. We're talking about Fukushima. Yes, we are. Anytime somebody tells you that a video is doctored, in the way that I just showed you, it's very, very easy to prove if that was the case or not. You don't just have to take someone's word for it and assume that little glitches that happen in compression or that happen as things are changing formats are somehow purposeful manipulation. Purposeful manipulation can be seen. And whenever nuclear disasters happen, particularly, it's important to keep an eye on these sorts of things. Because in reference to the explosion that took place at the nuclear reactor at Fukushima, most of the videos aren't around anymore, but there was a, a, the dynamic of the explosion was doctored. It was clear. And then later on, more footage came out from other media outlets and proved what had happened. So that little boring technical lesson I just gave you is not a boring technical lesson. I just taught you how to tell if a video was doctored or not. Um, it, it will leave a footprint within the editing program itself. You can't not have that. There's no way. It's like uh, walking through snow and not leaving a footprint. It's just not going to happen. There isn't a way to do it. Okay? Okay. Onward. Reuters. Which is now going to be the slowest site ever, ever, ever. Fukushima tests to help assess cooling of damaged reactors. The scary part here is twofold. It's like a double-edged sword, uh, the epitome of a catch-22. 
when they stop using water to cool the reactors, there's a better than average chance that you're going to have an out of control nuclear reaction going on, which they don't want. However, if they keep using water to cool these, they are accumulating more water than they can keep. And the solutions, of course, which worked in Chernobyl, Chernobyl, as they say, the solutions that work there with the Sakafkas cannot work in Japan due to the island nature of Japan. Uh, Russia is pretty much frozen, and it will continue to be pretty much frozen for the uh, radioactive life, at least of many of those isotopes. Yes, there are still ongoing problems with leaking. No, you won't be able to get close to uh, Chernobyl anytime soon. But thankfully, they were able to contain it to some degree there. That's not the case at all in Fukushima. So now they're talking about tapering back the water a bit. And there's, you know, again, there's going to be a lot of people worried about this, particularly if they know anything at all about nuclear fusion and nuclear fission and what happens when these elements get into the air. Listen to this. Into the environment itself, I should say, not even just the air. The owner of the Fukushima nuclear power plant, which is TEPCO, which is General Electric, who you should never invest in and never be part of a mutual fund that's in, ever, destroyed by an earthquake and tsunami nearly eight years ago, said on Friday that it planned tests early next year to see how much melted uranium has cooled into the damaged reactors. That is known, uh, well, the, the elephant, the elephant foot is the uh, one in uh, Chernobyl. That is known as corium, and it is when you have a, I'll explain this to some people that may not know. Here you have a nuclear containment vessel in the form of a Hooters shot glass. Now, you can put nuclear fuel in and keep it cool, but if something happens to the shot glass, the penny will come out, and now you've got a fine mess, and it'll, it'll go into the ground and ultimately into the water table, which puts it into the atmosphere, which rains it down on not just Japan, but due to the nature of the Earth, everyone. And it does not dissipate. You can't filter out radiation. It will always be as deadly. Always. If you dug somebody up that was uh, blasted with radioactivity during the bomb testing, if you were to dig up their corpse, the radionuclides that resided in their coffin and in their bodies would be just as deadly now, as they were when it first happened, and that will be the case with some of these elements up to hundreds of thousands, if not billions, with a B year. And if you don't believe that, then look up the half-life plutonium, uranium, and some of these elements. So they're dealing with this problem because they're hoping to find the corium at the bottom of the shot glass, as it were. That's what they're hoping for. If not, then it's burrowing into the ground, which you know was called the China effect. It was something, hi John, hi Cindy. The, the China effect was something that was called that because in theory, it wouldn't really work probably, it would hit the middle of the earth and explode. But in theory, you could melt the fuel all the way from the United States to China. So whatever's on the other side of Japan would be the effect that they are experiencing here. So with all of that as a backdrop, let's take a real good look at this. Again, Reuters. The tests planned for January to March will stop cooling water in the reactors. Great. To analyze how the melted uranium core reacts and heats up after cooling has stopped, said TEPCO. All reactors need to be cooled to limit the radioactive reactions that produce heat to generate electricity. At Fukushima, of course, the cooling systems in the earthquake, not just the tidal wave, by the way, were taken, uh, were took out the plant, annihilated. It's not a crippled plant. Uh, beautiful Dana mentioned this. No, it's, that's not crippled. It's decimated. It's destroyed. The natural disaster triggered the meltdowns of three of Fukushima Daiichi's six reactors, of course, spewing radiation into the air, soil, and, of course, 160,000 people lost their homes. From January, TEPCO will begin to gradually reduce the amount of water being pumped over the melted fuel in reactor 2. 
at the site to half the amount over a week, company spokesman said. Then TEPCO will resume full pumping, but in March, the company will stop our cooling for the seven hour period to test the analytical models, which have shown that the reactors will not overheat. Okay, friends, the only way, now who's with me on this? Who has been paying attention? This is why you tune into my show. How is this going to work? We know there has to be a nuclear reaction if they are not cooled. That is a matter of scientific fact. Absolute scientific fact. I'll answer your question, Cindy, in one second. Absolute scientific fact. So if the nuclear fuel isn't reacting, then that means that it's not in the containment vessel. Otherwise, when water is taken away from nuclear fuel, it always emits radioactivity due to the reaction. Uh, Cindy had asked, the conversation uh, in the background is confusing to me. Um, Basically, it was showing that the manipulation on the video could not have been conducted the way, it, it wasn't a doctored video. There's no way that you can doctor a video without it being noticed. And that applies when news agencies are posting video online, you're able to tell whether or not it has been doctored. And if anybody else has any questions regarding that, uh, go ahead and let me know. I'm going to make sure when the show's over, I don't want to stop now. Everybody will tune out. I'll go ahead and post the link in the comment line of this video regarding the doctoring of video for those of you that didn't get to see it on screen share. Moving on, friends, the Manichi has some interesting stories here that I wanted to share. Uh, Ex-TEPCO VP apologizes as defendant questioning begins in Fukushima uh, nuclear disaster trial. Now, how is it that the trial took eight years? These people poisoned the earth in what yet may be an extinction event for all of humankind, And it's just now going to trial. Many of these people are going to die of old age before they have to stand trial for the hideous things they did. What did they do? They ignored warnings that said that there was going to be a tsunami this big. Then hits Japan. They said it could never happen. They said it wouldn't happen. Guess what? Exactly like it was predicted. There's the earthquake, there's the tidal wave, and there's the destroyed plant. This matters because I ran is trying to build a nuclear power plant on one of the most active fault zones in the world. Even if they were a great and peaceful loving people, which they are not, there is absolutely no way in hell, none, zero, zip, zilch, that you can build a nuclear power plant on that site. And you really shouldn't build one anywhere, to tell you the truth, but we've covered that in the past. A former vice president of the TEPCO Electric Power Company apologized on October the 16th during a court questioning of three ex-TEPCO top officials who were indicted in charges of professional negligence, resulting in the death and injury over the 2011 nuclear disaster. Yeah. Considering that nuclear disaster experts, in no uncertain terms, had said this plant should not be built. Then, when it was unwisely built, the same people said that during the lifespan of this nuclear power plant in Fukushima, there will be this happening. It is mathematical fact. People would not listen, and now there it is. So yeah, I mean, millions of people, by the time this is all done, will end up with some form of cancer due to this. So this isn't a small deal. They will end up with bone problems, heart problems. They will end up with DNA problems. There will be, there's a direct change already in the human DNA due to bomb testing in the past. And this is far worse than any nuclear disaster or any bomb testing which has ever happened. And it's been going on every day for about eight years with no end in sight. Defendant Sakemutu, 68, said to the many people who lost their lives, their family members, or those who were forced to evacuate their houses, I have 
cause you great pain that cannot be expressed in words and extend my deepest apologies. I am very sorry about what happened. Maybe the time to be very sorry about what happened was when you were being warned. But you didn't because you were more worried about covering for the nuclear war industry and bringing in that money than you were of anything else. And don't tell me that the nuclear power industry isn't tied to the nuclear weapons industry, because it absolutely is. Why else do you think they're being subsidized? Because you can't insure them. They're uninsurable. They're subsidized with your tax dollars, so you're paying to give yourself cancer. We got two more stories to get to, friends. This is from Natural News. Is Fukushima radiation affecting the West Coast? Consider these signs. Now, this is for all the people that say, well, it doesn't matter to me. We live so far away. The answer to pollution is dilution. It's not. The ocean does not dilute anything at all. It just carries it from where the poison is to other people which the jet stream, of course, does as well. And, okay, we're not going to go over what happened in March 2011. We already know that. Um, experts estimate that it will take at least 40 years to finalize this cleanup, and in the meantime, 300 tons of radioactive water continue to be pumped into the Pacific Ocean each day. So you ask, Sam, what's that doing? Well, I can tell you what it's doing. Type in Pacific Ocean die-off once. The oceans are dying at record numbers due to this disaster, which is being largely covered up. We don't have the technology to approach the reactors, because as I've written about this uh, when I was with Conservative Daily Post, I wrote about it in Teddy Stick, I've done videos proving this, they can't even get robots to withstand the radiation, the components which within the very robots melt and uh, suffer, again, melt being a figurative word, are destroyed by the radioactive elements. So how do we know we're going to clean this up in 40 years when we don't even have the technology to get close to it now? The BBC reported in 2013 that the true levels of radiation around Fukushima were about 18, 18 times higher than originally thought. Uh, TEPCO estimated in the same year that between 20 to 40 trillion becquerels of radioactive strontium have all been, already been released into the Pacific Ocean since the disaster. It's logical to assume that this number must now have an increased exponentially. 40 trillion becquerels is 40 trillion chances to get a mutated cell, which is, of course, what leads to cancer, 40 trillion opportunities per second. What are you talking about, Sam? You just lost me. Stay with me. I'm good at this. A becquerel is a tiny nuclear reaction. Think of it as a microscopic explosion that happens within the body. Now, these two lighters represent cells, okay? Now, if the explosion happens and there's not another cell nearby, it's not a big deal. In some cases, our body can even heal it. However, if that hits another lighter and it stays, it's going to blow up and that cell is going to mutate and that cell is going to mutate and that cell is going to mutate. We have a word for that. That word is cancer. So that means... There, and it happens each second. That explosion happens per second in order to be a becquerel. So you have 40 trillion chances of that happening per second at 40 trillion becquerels. And what does it say? That this number must now have gone up exponentially. Global Research and Globalization Watchdog Organization, uh, they're called Global Research, believes that there are at least 28 lines of evidence that prove that the radiation is indeed causing destruction. Here's what we've got. Several types of animals, including walruses, seals, and polar bears, have been found with open wounds or fur loss. The U.S. Geological Survey released a statement about the phenomenon, labeling it Alopecia, 
or a loss of fur and other skin regions. Huge numbers of sea lions have inexplicably died, with 45% of the pups born in June of 2013 not surviving, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. They call this a huge, an unusual mortality event. How about a Fukushima event? Populations of sockeye salmon are at an all-time low along the coastline in both Canada and Alaska. Fish along the west coast of Canada have been found bleeding from the gills, eyes, and bellies, and nobody knows why. Now, before you, a crazy, psychopathic, global warming nutcases, start to say that that's what's causing it. If that was the case, this would be happening it's all over the oceans. This is happening specifically in the Pacific Ocean. So don't tell me that it's global warming, because even if that myth was real, it wouldn't explain why this is only happening here. Use the thinking part of your brain. A field of radioactive debris the, size, debris the size of California was released from Fukushima. It crossed the Pacific Ocean and reached the West Coast. That would be the United States, for those of you uh, who are, you know, it's a little bit slow. Scientists have discovered very high levels of cesium-137 in plankton and in the Pacific close to Hawaii in the West Coast. Cesium-137 attacks the thyroid. It creates cancer. Earlier, we talked about 20 trillion becquerels of strontium-90. What's strontium-90? Strontium-90 is bone cancer. That's what strontium-90 is. It's a direct path to bone cancer, which is why you have to limit how much milk you drink. I take calcium supplements. Men take a little bit less than what they advertise because you can get uh, kidney problems. But take calcium instead of drinking milk because milk will hold strontium-90 like, again, like a, like a sponge. It will just drain it in and it will directly into your body. In a test performed in California, all 15 bluefin tuna examined were found to be contaminated with radiation. Well, they say, well, it's, it's safe. What do you mean it's safe? How do you know how much tuna someone eats? How do you know which radioactive molecule they ingested? Could it have been a hot particle? If you don't know what that is, it's an extremely radioactive uh, concentration into one area. They found it in the black goo that was in Tokyo after the Fukushima disaster that washed into the ocean. One of those fish would be all you need to pretty much guarantee your, your, your doom later in life. So how's it safe? Well, where's the safety at here? Canadian scientists have discovered extremely high levels of nuclear radiation in several samples, samples taken from a variety of fish. One sea bass tested, for example, was found to have 1,000 becquerels of cesium per kilogram. How do you like 1,000 opportunities per second at a problem in your glands or at a, at a cancer diagnosis? A researcher at the Japan Meteorological Agency's Meteorological Research Institute found 30 billion becquerels of cesium and 30 billion becquerels of radioactive strontium, bone cancer, are released into the Pacific Ocean from Fukushima each day. 30 billion opportunities of cancer per day that do not go away. Let's look up what the half-life of strontium-90 is. This will be pleasant. How long does it remain a threat? How long now that it's in the ocean? 28.8 years. It's happening per day. We're not even eight years into this. we still got two decades. Is anybody starting to see why I do this show now? Is anybody paying any attention? Is anybody hitting share? Because I think it matters. Alarmingly, scientists believe that 100 times more radiation has been released into the ocean from the Fukushima disaster than the total amount released in the Chernobyl disaster. Experts predict a steep rise in the number of people diagnosed with cancer after eating fish contaminated with radiation. Oh, but Sam, it's safe. B.S. it's safe. He is a nuclear policy professor at the Uni of California, Santa Cruz. Hirsch noted... Look at what's going on now. They're dumping huge amounts of radioactivity into the ocean. No one expected that in 2011. Well, I, we told you here it was going to happen. We mean no one. I said it. Artie Gunderson said it. Dr. Chris Busby said it. Lauren Murray said it. 
We could have large numbers of cancer from the ingestion of fish. Despite all evidence, the mainstream media remains virtually silent on the potential for great harm to U.S. citizens. Fortunately, organizations like Global Research and Natural News can be relied upon. Well, so can the correct views. And that, friends, if you know anything about this show at all, brings us to the Dumdy of the Day. Once again, the Dumdy of the Day does tie in, as it were, to our contest. That came in a bit loud. Many apologies. Our contest is as follows. We do the Dunce Cap of the Month Award every month. We do the Dunce Cap of the Year. Once a year. Well, donate to the show at the correct views at Hotmail.com through PayPal. And I will see to it that you get to help pick who wins the Dunce Cap of the Year. Your favorite business, your charity, your band, your organization, your church, your whatever gets promoted all the way to June 1st on each and every show we do. How much do you have to donate? That's the best part. You decide what you donate. How's that work for you? Whatever you give is fine with me. Help me get these things mailed. Help me get the show to keep going. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, that brings us, of course, to the Dumb D of the Day. What is the Dumb D of the Day? ESPN, you have to be a subscriber to get the video. If I could show the video, I would I would uh, probably give them the Dunce Cap of the Month, which is going to be done this weekend. There was a special, and I was watching it. I couldn't figure out, I'm a big skateboarding fan. I couldn't figure out for the life of me why skateboarders were getting so much time on ESPN. I was happy to see it. I was at work looking at the big screen. I was happy to see it. I'm a DJ. But why was it happening? Then it cuts to the fact that they're surfers. Surfing Fukushima. Remember the heavy metal song Surf Nicaragua? Anyone, that's word of the day. Type word of the day, Surf Nicaragua, and I'll send you something free. I need your address. Um, We got dumber. We got Surf Fukushima. These two idiots were encouraging people to swim and surf in the waters of Fukushima. What was their reasoning? It was, it was safe, right? No. Here's what they said. Because of the disaster, Many people don't wish to come here anymore, and that's a real shame, because the waves are beautiful. The waves are just as exciting to surf as they were before the Fukushima disaster. And then it shows the wave. This idiot should be drugged behind a car. Yeah, it looks beautiful, until you realize that radioactivity cannot be tasted. It cannot be smelled. By the time you taste it, if you taste a metallic a taste, you're already poisoned. You're done. It doesn't have a smell. It doesn't have a taste. 300 tons of trillions and billions of becquerels, which we just went over what that is, being released into the ocean. And these idiots on ESPN were giving airtime to people that were encouraging boneheads to surf there. <laughs> Friends, I don't know what else to say. I mean, I hope this video has enlightened you. I hope you can donate if you can. That would help to keep the show funded. It costs a lot to keep everything going. The most important thing is, regardless of what happens, I'm going to keep doing these videos because these videos matter. These videos prevent people from supporting the nuke industry. These videos help people that may believe in global warming understand that even if that is true, that nuclear power is not by any means the solution. So thank you for tuning in, friends. Those of you on Facebook, I will put the link for the uh, doctoring video, as I promise. And uh, thanks again, friends. Good night. God bless.